We'd like to thank our underwriters, Furnistown Incorporated and Music in Paradise, Veterans List Incorporated, connecting veteran-owned businesses with everyone, U.S. Kennels, Inc., saving vets one paw at a time, the Pemberton Coffee House, great coffee, food, friendship, and music, Mike Pullen for Congress, Pullen for Dot Us, Kirkland Hall for Delegates, 38A, a man for everybody, Pack 14, home of extraordinary local TV, Clark and Steinhorn, attorneys, amazing attorneys. Watch this and listen to all this on the very best music, at, on YouTube, at any time, and on any device. Because a life without live music just ain't hardly worth it. Hi there, this is Billy Earl, and I am here with KT. This is the very best music, and we're going to talk about the state of music in the world today, and we're going to talk about current trends. KT, yes, thank sir. you so much for coming over, brother. It's my we pleasure. appreciate it's it. My pleasure. We're just sitting here jawboning about music, about popular music, and I know a lot of people don't feel like it's legitimate. What do you think? It's not that it's not legitimate. It's legitimate music. It's just, uh, you know, radio will take a block of 300 songs, and they'll just play it over and over again until everybody's sick of it, and then they'll find another 300 blocks. And uh, that's just... It's just the way radio works, and it's, it's sad, but it's pop music, and people really like pop music, and who am I yeah. to judge somebody on liking a style of music? I mean, you know me, I like every style of music there is, you know? Yeah. But uh, we were just talking about pop country. Not for me. I could care less about it. You know, I, I, I don't care about your pickup truck. I don't care about your dogs, you know what I mean? So, me, I'd rather support my local scene and my local... Uh, musicians because they have something new they have something different than what you hear on the radio yeah you know so I try to go as far as I can there um, with my show I try to put every style of music different bands you've never heard of you know I, I guess it's kind of a hipster thing to do but okay it's uh, well let's talk about your to. show for a minute uh, I can find this on uh, WSDL 90.7 90 on Friday from 8 from, to 11. From 8 to 11, three hour three stretch. Hours, okay. Yeah. Luckily, I have my own studio inside my house. So Wonderful. Yeah, I can take my time doing it and actually do it right and make it sound good. Yeah. Outstanding. What kind of equipment are you using there? Uh, I just have an old computer with Cubase on it. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple little gadgets. I run all the microphones and everything through. But it's really not much of a studio. You don't need much to put. I mean, you know, you don't yeah. you don't need a lot of equipment to put music on the radio. You just right. don't. You know, as long as you got an internet connection, well, you you can broadcast. Okay. You know? Now you ended up in, uh, in in at NPR after headquarters live closed. That was kind of a sad thing, wasn't it? Was it was a very sad thing. You know, yeah. it's, uh, this town is. You know, in the late '90s and early 2000s, this town was jumping when it came to 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 the music scene. You know, but one by one, all these little venues started to close down, leaving. Nowhere really to play, so a lot of these bands, they broke up and started doing acoustic solo and acoustic duo and trios and stuff. And, uh, you know, we finally had Headquarters Live, but it was either too late or too soon for Headquarters Live. Okay. Um, we had some shows where we had four or five hundred people. We had some shows where we had four or five people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And one can't balance the other. You kind of need a steady crowd. You need, you need consistency. Yeah, yeah. And then I got sick, you know, several years ago, and it got really bad just before I had to leave headquarters to go do a bunch of surgeries and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know what happened to headquarters live after that. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't focused on that at all. Really. Yeah. I didn't care, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I cared, but I had You had fish. other fish to fry. Exactly. Yeah. So they told me it was closing down, so I was like, all right, well... Before it closes down, I want to book all of my buddies. We're all going to do one big final blowout right. party. And we did that. And we had a, just a blast, you know. And, of course, there was a bunch of people there. And, but too little, too late, you know what I mean? People need to support music. If they don't support music, then it's just going to go to pop country. And that's <laughs> yeah. And that's what we're going to be stuck on, you know. You know what my mama says? She says that a uh, world without live music just ain't hardly worth it. A world without art just ain't worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be music. I mean, it's performing arts and visual arts and, you know, that kind of routine. But They're all under attack. You know, that seems to be the first thing, especially in the educational system. So now you're on radio and you're, uh, you're talking to bands that people uh, aren't generally familiar with. How do you find them? Uh, there's always... Uh, a place to find it, like Pandora is a great source of trying to find something new. Uh, there are websites out there 
that deal with up and coming bands and they deal with you know the smaller bands and I don't know it takes a lot of research through the internet to find new music which is kind of really a sad thing it's actually a hard thing to do is to go and find new music isn't that terrible it is and I mean you have to you know sometimes you fall down the YouTube hole and you, you run across <laughs> you run across something that's really cool you know what I the mean? YouTube hole yeah I mean well you, you search for a chicken piccata recipe next thing you know you're on you know UFC fights for some reason. I don't. I'm not sure how <laughs> what their algorithm is, but it's. But when you start searching music, then you'll start finding new and different bands through that as well. I mean, I do a lot of work to try to get different music. Try to get musicians you've never heard of. Yeah. On the radio. Um, you know, when I started the show, I started with bands that I liked, and it's bands from like the late '90s, early 2000s. Okay. So mostly the jam band type of stuff. Yeah. But now I've reached out into like the electronica world, the hip hop world, um, some country. There is still some good new country out there. You're not going to hear it on the radio though. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. They got to be a star first. Yeah. Um, who are you listening to these days? It's blowing your hair back. No pun intended. <laughs> hey man, I don't. I don't have any hair left. You know yeah, that. I know. I got. I, I, got, I got the same thing. <laughs> Follically challenged. Yeah. Um, you know, oddly enough, we're still talking about country, but Chris Stapleton has really blown me away. Yep. Uh, his voice, his songwriter, I mean, he was a songwriter in Nashville way before he was a stage guy. He's written hundreds of songs. He was in the Steel Drivers for a while. Okay. Which is a great bluegrass band. And uh, I've been listening a lot to some Electronica stuff, uh, like Lotus and... I, I don't know, too many bands to name, but I've always been into the Grateful Dead. I've always been a huge deadhead, so okay. that's my go-to band. Yeah. If I'm sitting around and I want to listen to music, I'll, I'll go ahead and listen to the Grateful Dead, you know, but that's not new. <laughs> Everybody's heard at least one of their songs, you know what I mean? So. Well, I understand they got a new uh, hot you-know-what guitar player. Yeah, they got John Mayer. I actually was fortunate enough to see uh, four, four or five shows this summer. You yeah. know, whenever I felt good. And uh, John Mayer, he's uh, he, <laughs> remarkably, he fits into the Grateful Dead somehow. I'm not really sure how I would that never have uh, prognosticated that. He can, he's a killer guitar player. He is. You know? He is. If, you have, if you've ever watched uh, Eric Clapton's Crossroads, yeah, he was on there. Oh, I know. Tearing it up, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eric Clapton. You yeah. Know? So, um, I mean, they also have Otil Burbridge, uh, bass player. Who's played with like uh, Government Mule and Almond Brothers? Yeah, I love that style. Of music. He's he's the go-to bass player for some of these older bands that uh, lose their bass players. Okay. So, but it was it was fantastic. I actually did a three-hour show on just Dead and Company, which is what the new Grateful Dead is. Really? Yeah, but, that's right. That's right. Because um, I kind of wanted to showcase the fact that yeah, you, you know John Mayer from his pop songs. Yeah. Well, he's not an idiot. He knows where to make money. He knows how to make money. And he knows if he writes pop songs, then people will buy it yep. and come to his shows. But at the same time, he's out there touring with Dead and the Company. He's out there jamming with like a band's like Slightly Stupid, which is like a kind of a reggae kind of thing. I don't know. Like okay. And everything. But he goes out and does that for fun and then makes money writing pop tunes and then goes back out and has fun again. Must be nice. Well, he's a smart guy. Must you know? be nice. He's a smart guy. And he's my age. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, speaking of, uh, of Eric Clapton, one of my favorite musical moments of, uh, of all time is watching John Mayall's 70th birthday. Love John Mayall. Okay. Love John Mayall. Did you see the 70th uh, video? Mm -mm. Okay. Camera's panning left to right. Got a bass player over here. Don't know who he is. Goes through him. John is sitting there. He's got a keyboard and a Strat, and so he's going back and forth. Uh, drummer, don't know him. And then there's a guy, big guy. And he's sitting there, and he's playing these little triplet arpeggios, and he's really just tearing this thing up. And then there's a guy next to him who is leaning over and watching his finger work and playing the rhythm part. Well, that guy is Eric Clapton. The guy he's watching is a guitar player that very few people have heard of, but I am proud to call a friend of mine, and he, he's played on both of my CDs, Buddy Whittington from Fort Worth, Texas. Buddy, yeah. Buddy is just a killer guitar player. He can go from genre to genre. It's just, uh, just amazing. Um, but there's guys like that that are out there. That um, There's a ton of them, actually, and I've met a lot of them just around here. Yeah. You know. 
Well, who would you who would you point to here as the uh, the un unpolished diamonds of the Del Marva? Tell you what, I was just talking to these guys the other day. Uh, the band Audiophile, okay, and my buddy Jay Moore. They uh, it's kind of a mixture of uh, R and B mixed with hip hop, and um, they they were at Headquarters Live last last party, and they blew everybody away because really? they're that good and they're almost so polished that they're ready for radio um and i'm actually going to go next week and go you know sit down record with them. them well i'm not going to record them. i'm going to sit down with my guitar and see if i can yeah help them get through and write some songs and I, they're they're going to go somewhere i think that that is the band that is going to go somewhere um you've also got breakfast a bunch of young guys okay heard of them and you know when they play in Salisbury, they draw two or three hundred people. Really, no problem, no problem at all. And that's that's one of those bands that just came out of nowhere, like a bunch of young guys. All yeah. they did, all they did was play Third Friday and a couple couple shows here and there. And okay. next thing you know, they have a huge crowd. They're playing up in Baltimore and DC now. You okay, know? where are they from? Uh, they're from all over. I think most of them are from uh, like the Baltimore area yeah. and all the little towns around Baltimore. Um, but they're phenomenal, and I know they're going places because they've already got a lot of opportunities ahead of them. And it just goes to show you, if you want to be, you know, I, I hate to use the word famous, but if you want to be a well-known musician, yeah, you got to be good. You can't just be... It does help. Yeah, you can't just be a guy <laughs> who goes out there and goes, check out all my stuff, why am I not famous? And there's a, a lot of musicians that can't understand why they're not famous. Yeah. It's like, well, what are you doing to make yourself famous? Are you constantly getting better at writing songs? Are you... Networking with other musicians, right. and maybe sitting in on their albums, help get your name out there. Are you opening up for somebody for no money just to get your name? Just out to there? get the name out there. You know, everybody wants five, six, seven hundred bucks to play. It's like, well, you got to earn that. Yeah, you have to earn that. You have to bring five to seven hundred dollars worth of business to that place for you to be worth it. You know what I mean? And not not a lot of musicians do that because they don't. They don't promote themselves properly. You feel like the uh, the business end of this is eluding them? Yeah. and, the, and Well, you know, there's a huge business end. Yeah. Without that, you're just some Joe Schmo playing at a little tiny bar out in the middle of Delaware. They call it show business for a reason. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, and there was a point in time where I was in a band and we started being popular and we started, you know, playing a lot bigger gigs. But uh, it, just, it just fell apart. You know, people had kids and careers and everything yeah. to take care of. Um, I wasn't too heartbroken over it. I, I came here and I started doing solo duo acoustic stuff, you know. I got really into writing music here recently. Basically, I've got nothing better to do, you know. <laughs> I lost lost my job, you know, because of being sick. And so I just sit at home and I do the radio show and I write music. And uh, I hope to get into the studio. That way, when I'm better, yeah, I'll have recorded music and then I'll start the process over again you know gotcha um, I'm still promoting myself now even though I'm not really out gigging or yeah. doing any of that stuff um, and it's only so my name's still out there and when I do decide to start playing again you know maybe I'll have a band behind me maybe I won't I don't okay. really know I don't really care at this point uh, I just want to get back out and play again because that yeah, was so much fun you know yeah. and, it's a uh, terminal disease it, <laughs> Really is. Even if you're not good at it, you're like, I have to do it. Um, and I'm hope I hope I'm good enough to get out there and do something a little more than just play little bars here. Uh huh. Right? So we'll we'll see what pans out next year when I'm done with all the chemo and all that crap. Right. So I don't know. That's that's where I'm at in life currently. Well, are you working on anything in the studio right now? Right and now, this is your studio, right? Well, if I if I record professionally, I could do it in my studio, but I'd rather go where somebody has an arsenal of microphones that you know we right. can toy around with. I've only got so many so many microphones just because you know, the stuff's expensive. They know? are expensive, but I know a lot of people that own studios, like good quality professional studios, and I'll probably go in yeah. there, you know. But I'll probably go in with a full band just to give people an idea of what it sounds like. But I'll probably still do a lot of a a lot of acoustic stuff. Okay. You know. So we'll see. Like I said, it, this is all next year. I don't want to think that far ahead just yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know, knock, knock on wood. I don't, You'll make I that decision when the time I comes. I hope everything's fine come next yeah. year. You know. 
Uh, I was on my way to the Maryland game last night, and in the CD player was uh, the reminders. And I'll tell you, uh, the the production on their stuff is just so pristine. Yeah. They're doing it up at MSA, and it's just a thing of beauty. I love Mid-South. Those guys are great. They are great. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> Hello, Gino. Just saying hi. Um, who else from around here uh, do you like to listen to? Who do you think's super talented and underappreciated? Uh, Meredith Roundsley. Uh, yeah. She's a great songwriter. She's actually doing a lot for the music scene as well. She has these little roundtable events uh -huh. where you know she'll have three or four songwriters up there, and they just kind of talk about how they wrote the song, what the song's about, and they just go around in a circle and play those songs, and I find that absolutely fascinating. I mean... As a songwriter myself, to listen to another songwriter uh -huh. talk about how they went through the process of writing, well, I I take that as an educational thing. It is, and I'll take it to my you know songwriting, and kind of you know see if I can use some of their talents and skills, and it can only make me a better songwriter. Yeah, and that's true with all styles of music. You know, um, there's Brian Russo. Excellent. I mean, he is unbelievable. Love that guy Brian. can write a song every 15 minutes. You should see his, you should see his catalog. There's like a couple hundred songs in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he he's absolutely amazing. He's got he's got right now he's doing like this whole uh, like New Orleans sound. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the older bluesy kind of New Orleans sound that I'm really digging. He's got a band called Bourbon Scotch. Okay. Or Bark and Scotch. Excuse me, Bark and Scotch. And you know they're they're really good. He just gave me one of their CDs. It's amazing. You know, you got Auto Grumman, you got Eastern Electric, yep. you got, uh, there's just a ton of great bands around here that nobody really knows of because there's not that many venues around here right. anymore. You know, people right. would rather go to a small bar with a DJ and just stand around and stare at each other. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I mean, but that's, you know, they're into pop music, so they want to hear stuff that they know and yeah. they can sing to. You know, yeah. They don't care about discovering new music, you know. Radio radio used to be the place that you go to find music. Not anymore. Know? Not anymore. No, if, if it's on there, it's because it's a... Uh, it's because somebody spent a lot of money to yeah, make sure it was make there. make sure it was there. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I, mean, I was just, just in there works. cutting film for uh, No Spare Time. And, uh, I love No Spare Time. I do, too. And Mickey is just the biggest sweetheart. Uh, he is, and he's just a monster player. But I'll tell you, uh, Caton, uh, the guitar yep. player in that band, who's now headed for Barcelona, Spain, yeah. to uh, study out there. Well, his fingers already move a thousand miles an hour. What's yeah. he got to learn? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But he's he's going to get better as the time goes along. Yeah. Yep. But uh, and they do they do just a terrific job. I was kind of surprised that there wasn't a uh, a better market for uh, for bluegrass. There was actually. Um, Bringing bluegrass fans out of their house is proving to be a very difficult thing. But there is a huge uh, bluegrass fan base around here. Mm -hmm. You know, we had uh, you know we had seldom seen at headquarters. Level. Oh yeah, I was we, at we packed show. the place. We packed it absolutely packed it. Um, in fact, we had no spare time. I think open for that show. Yeah, that's right. Um, but the second time I had seldom seen play, we only sold two hundred tickets. No, you know, and that's that blew me away. And it's like. Did we just hit the right day the first time I booked them, or you know what what happened there? I'm not real sure. I'll never ever figure out the music scene around here, even though I try so difficult. so hard. Well, let me ask you a question. The uh, the music scene around here is getting ready to undergo kind of uh, shock therapy, mm -hmm. if you will, with the uh, National Folk Festival coming here. I can't wait. I can't either. You know, maybe that'll blow the music scene up around here. Well, I hope it does. And I hope what it does, I hope it opens up some new venues. And I hope it allows people to do what uh, we call back in Texas is uh, the etiquette of listening to music. Mm -hmm. That uh, you whisper. And, you know, you're not, uh, you know, your glass is not making a bunch of noise. But, you know, you're respectfully quiet because you're there to listen to the music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the right way to proceed when you're really serious about hearing what the artist has to say rather than, yeah, you're there to, you know, pick up a girl or eat a burger or, you know, something else. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also, you know, th there is party music, you know, and that's there's a market for that as well. I mean, the last band I was in was centered around partying, you know. Okay. So we didn't mind that people came out 
and clanked their glasses and hooped and hollered and everything right. else. I mean, we didn't mind that. They were there to see us, but they were having a great time. And to look out and see all those people having just a wonderful time makes me feel good. Yeah. But at the same time, when I'm doing my solo and duo acoustic stuff, you know, shut up. Yeah. You know, I've got these songs that are right out of my heart. I want you to listen to it. If you don't like it, walk away. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's two there's two sides to that coin. Um, there are, and there's a place for both in this world. There is. There is. Um, there's even some solo guys who can somehow manage to get people up and dancing and hooping and hollering, you know, like that's that's my kind of crowd. Is I, yeah. I, I hoop and holler and carry on. I mean, I don't drink or do drugs or anything like that, but I still really enjoy that aspect of yeah. music that makes you feel good, you yeah. know. But if I'm seeing somebody for the first time and they're a little bit quieter than, you know, say the rock and roll guys, um, yeah, just, just shut up and listen. That's all. And the folk festival will be like that. It'll be both sides. Like I said, it'll be both sides. Um, but it is bringing us an amphitheater downtown. Absolutely it is. You know what I mean? So there's a venue right there. That's a huge, huge issue. Yeah, because it's not going anywhere. Once and, it's built, it ain't going anywhere. And plus, they have the uh, the requirement that uh, after the three-year contract com uh, comes in and goes, their obligation is to provide a similar type event on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Which is absolutely terrific. Yeah. And I mean, <coughs> Our mayor's done a great job, you know, bringing that kind of stuff. Kudos, in Jake. Hi, Jake. Uh, kudos to uh, to Caroline O'Hare and uh, all the people who have been involved with this and have put in their blood, sweat, and tears to make uh, make the Barry a music uh, music friendly environment. We thank you. Mm -hmm. There's there's actually a lot of us out there, tr really, really trying hard. Yeah. To keep the music scene alive around here and. Uh, I think there's this renaissance that's starting to happen. I it's hope so. Slow. It's slow, but there is this renaissance of people actually, you know, wanting to see live music and songwriters are starting to stick together now uh -huh. and realize, look, we can't do it alone. You know, we need a group. So we all find each other gigs. We help promote each other. Um, and that's, that's what it's going to take to build the scene back up is I need to introduce my crowd to you know, Brian Russo. Right. You know what I mean? And he does, I hope he will do the same for me. Yeah. You know, once I actually get some recorded material out there. Um, but that's that's what you need to make a scene grow, is everybody sticking together and sharing each other and promoting each other, which has been a big, big thing of mine. I'm trying to do this on Facebook as well. Is get, get out there and start promoting not just yourself, all your friends. Music in general. Yeah. Live music in general. Live music by local people in general. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, you know, there is there is a big market for cover bands. I know that. I'm not stupid. I know. There's a big market for it. Yeah. I like original music, and I want there mm -hmm. to be a big market for original music around here. You know, something you haven't heard. Something you may step out of your comfort zone a little bit and go see something that you may not be into. Yeah. You know, if you're a country guy, go see a hip hop show. Yeah, like seriously, just jump straight at it and just go in it. Maybe you'll like something. Maybe, Maybe you, you will like something. But hiding behind the "I don't like rap" just not a good way to proceed because no. it's music. No, it's it is music, and there's a lot of great hip hop guys around here who you're not going to hear about drugs, money, ho, that kind of thing. You're not going to hear that stuff. Yep. There's a lot of uplifting and positive hip hop out uh, out there, and there's a renaissance in the black community to kind of raise everybody up. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, let's, let's pick, each other, pick each other up and move forward. Let's find something better for ourselves. And hip hop music is no different than that. You know, a lot of these hip hop guys are actually sitting in on each other's albums. And mm -hmm. I actually just, I'm doing a show right now and a lot of it's gonna be local hip hop. But like I said, it's super positive and super uplifting lyrics. Stuff that you're not used to, things like, uh, you know, what you can do to be a better person, you know. Yes. Um, and there's a there's a lot of like even the rock guys, the country guys, the electronica guys, all them people don't know this. They have these preconceptions of what hip hop is. And I don't ha I don't have that preconception. Yeah. Because I didn't know anything about it until some buddies of mine, local, introduced me to the local scene. Yeah. And uh, it just it absolutely floored me. Absolutely floored me. There's that kind of <coughs> talent around here. You know, because I, I come from St. Louis. Okay. Hip-hop and rap out there is a completely different thing. You right, know, right, right. what, the third most dangerous city in yeah. the U.S. or something like that? So it's a different thing out there. So, but here, it's such a tight-knit community, and they all care about it, that 
they're writing these lyrics and helping each other, you know, stand up. It's like quit hiding behind everything and just stand up, be you. That's all you need to be. So I'm hoping people will just throw away their preconceptions of what hip hop is. Give it a shot. You yeah, may, you may still hate it, but at least you tried. Well, let me give you a uh, an artist to watch. Uh, we interviewed him last week, and it was on Pac-14. It'll go on YouTube December one. But you'll also see him down at UMES in the uh, in the springtime. Uh, his name is a million, and he's from Wilmington. No, he's from Dover, Delaware, born in D.C., raised in Dover, uh, motivational rapper. Just came back from a tour of the U.K., was kind enough to come in. Uh, I met him at the Frederick Douglass event over in Easton. Mm -hmm. And uh, this kid has a ton to say about being a good person, about being productive, about being uh, not being a hater. Right. And I don't, I got into hip-hop basically through my kids because well, they were raised in Annapolis and there's a, a fairly vibrant community sure there is, of hip-hop yeah. artists. And so that was my familiarity with it. But this kid is just, um, he's just off the charts. He's good. And the things that he's saying and the way that he's saying it, um, as a songwriter myself, I wish that I had the, the lyrical ability that he does, but yeah. it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> lyrics are the hardest thing to write. I mean, anybody can put four or five chords together yeah. and you know call it a song. We well, you know what they say in Texas. You know, any more than three chords, then uh, you're showing. Well, that's off. not that's not just Texas. <laughs> that's all across America. Uh -huh. You know, if you're playing more than three chords, you're playing jazz. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, I, I'm yeah. gonna steal that if you don't mind. Yeah, no, no, no it's yours. You can but um. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, it, lyrics have always been the thing that I listen to. Um, D.A.R. Constitution Hall last week had John Prine there. and John Prine's, I grew up on John Prine. Uh, master, yeah. just an absolute master. Uh, and he can say things in lyrics that, you know, the rest of us just grapple for, what's the right word, what's the right intonation how do i put this together and it just seems to flow from him yeah it just naturally comes out of him i mean yeah he's, he's half singing half talking so that helps i think you know for his style i agree uh I, i've been fortunate enough to see him live a bunch of times like i said i, I grew up on john prine one of my first songs i ever learned was john prine yeah you know, my dad was a big 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 fan and uh yeah i mean that's it's hard that's why a lot of people have lyricists to just write lyrics and then the musician will come in and kind of touch it up a little bit right. and add music to it. And I wish I had that. <laughs> you know? But over the past four years, I've written a lot of songs. Um, and it's because I've been through a lot over the last four years. Yeah. And it's a little easier for me right now to come up with lyrics. Because okay. I, I have a lot to say right now. Okay. You know? And a lot of it's really emotional. I make you, you want to Make you want to cry on your beer kind of music, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to get out of that a little bit and get back to... Something that's not so slow and sad, you know. Well, you know, Hank made a uh, career out of that. Yeah, he actually made a huge career. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, don't get too far. No, 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 no. I mean, I'll, I'll still have that same uh, that same feeling. It's just, you know, I want to do something a little more upbeat. I've written a couple of songs for my girlfriend um, because she has been amazing through all of this. Without her, I'd, well, God probably, bless her. I'd be dead by now if it wasn't for her. You know, she's put up with all my crap over the last few years. And uh, so I was really motivated to write a couple of songs for her, and they're probably my, the best songs I've ever written. Um, yeah, that From the Heart stuff uh, has just a different feel because it's not, it doesn't sound like somebody's contorting phrases mm -hmm. to make them work and rhyme. It sounds like a conversation that's taking place. And, and it is, and you, sh and, you know, songwriters should never push lyrics. Yeah. You know, you're just coming up with crap that rhymes. It doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of that on the radio. Trust me. Yeah. You know. But I, I like music that actually means something, and it doesn't even matter what style of music it is. It's if, if the lyrics catch me and it's like, you know what, this guy or girl is really coming from the heart on this. You know, something, yeah. something has touched them to a point where they had to vocally say it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You don't see that a lot in popular music. Uh, that's, that's why you have auto-tune and everything else. Just... <laughs> You know, nobody can sing anymore, yeah. nobody can write lyrics anymore, and it's, you know, this big thing called mumble rap where you don't even know what the hell No idea. Saying. You know, they're no just idea. mumbling into a microphone and somehow they're millionaires. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, I don't get it, but 
like you said, with the folk festival coming around, I hope that changes people's minds a little bit, even songwriters, to kind of listen to the lyrics and listen to the compositions themselves and realize that, okay, well, maybe I need to do something a little different. Yeah. You know, it's, you know what I mean? So I like songwriters, and I, I said that earlier, that I find it an educational thing to speak with these guys and figure out how they write music. You yeah. Know, what's, what's, what's their muse? Like, you know, what's your process? Because it only makes me a better musician. Absolutely. You, know, you never stop learning. I'm going to do a little uh, little commercial here, a uh, piece that we're going to put out next week after we do a uh, live interview with a fellow named Johnny Seaton. We're going to play some music that has never been heard. I love uh, it. It was recorded back in 1988 with the guy that I consider the greatest popular guitar player of my generation, Danny Gatton. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough when I was in college, I was the manager of a dive bar in College Park, and we had a back room and Danny would come and play, and I was just astounded. I had never seen anybody play and attack a guitar the way he did, so adroitly, with such nuance, mm -hmm. with such flavor, it was just remarkable. Well, anyway, Johnny made these tapes back in, uh, in 1988 and just got them. So there's 11 songs that were released on vinyl back in 1988, and there's one song that's never been played, never been heard, never been anywhere. And so we're going to play it on the show and see what you people think. But you have to understand that Mr. Danny Gatton is pretty much the end-all, be-all when it comes to guitar players. So hold on to your statement. hats. That's a bold statement. It's a bold statement. Well, once, once you air it, you got to give it to me. So I, will give I, it, I, it. <laughs> I will give it to you concurrently yeah. so you can have it at exactly the same time. You know what they used to call him? The Humbler. The Humbler? Yeah. I've got a, uh, a YouTube thing with uh, Alvin Lee and Vince Gill, who I think is just a monster guitar player. Vince Gill. Oh, he's... And then uh, Danny. And Danny just eats their lunch. And, uh, and, and they're looking at each other going, what am I doing here? Right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've got something else. I've got a three-hour interview with Vince's mama made back in 2008. My parents and her go way back, and I drove up to Oklahoma City and talked to her in her living room about Vince and how he grew up sure. and his daddy and all that. So we're going to play that, too. And I'll tell you, she's got some really interesting things about her baby boy, Vince Gill, who's just a monster uh, electric guitar player, acoustic guitar player, mandolin player. He could probably disconnect a piano and put it on his back and play it at the same time. But that's what we're looking at. I'll be happy to give that to you if you want I'd it love too. It. I would love it. Anything I've never heard, I'd you know, this, this gotta is, have it. This is gotta stuff nobody's it. heard. Well, brother, uh, I want to thank you for coming by, sure. and I want you to know that you are in our prayers daily I appreciate for your that. health. And I love what you're doing on Friday night. And if you got a lick of sense out there, you're going to be listening from 8 to 11, 8 to 11. on 90.7 Delmarva Public Radio to KT and the Delmarva Groove. That's right. There That's you right. go. Well, look, this has been Billy Earl. This is the very best music. I want to thank you for tuning in because a life without live music just ain't hardly worth it. God bless you all real good. We'll see you on down the road. We'd like to thank our underwriters, Furnace good job, Incorporated, man. Music in Paradise, Veterans List Incorporated, connecting veteran-owned businesses with everyone, U.S. Kennels, Inc., saving vets one paw at a time, the Pemberton Coffee House, great coffee, food, friendship, and music. Mike Pullen for Congress, Pullen for Dot Us, Kirkland Hall for Delegate, 38A, a man for everybody, Pack 14, home of extraordinary local TV, Clark and Steinhorn, attorneys, amazing attorneys. Watch this and listen to all this on the very best music at, on YouTube at any time and on any device because a life without live music just ain't hardly worth it.